Now at 11, a big feat is underway right now in the water off Sauvy Island. We're going to check in with the Portland woman's effort to swim all 38 miles around it. Plus, it's an event 17 years in the making. We visit the rare corpse flower on the Washington State campus in Vancouver. It's about to bloom. And a Portland cupcake shop suddenly closes its doors. Why some brides-to-be say they're left wondering what's happened with their orders. Your wedding is expensive, and to have 200 bucks just disappear suck. Your news starts now. You hear about things like that happening, but I've never imagined that it would have happened to us. First now at 11 o'clock, a mother and daughter in Portland for a wedding are robbed on the street. And tonight, police are looking for the masked gun gunman behind this attack. KGW's Mike Benner spoke with both of these women tonight. He joins us live from right where it happened, Northeast 33rd and Webster. Mike, what a frightening ordeal. Yeah, it certainly was, Dan, but uh, both Danny and Kaylee Jones tell me the support from the community has been overwhelming, including the bride and groom whose wedding they were in town for. The newlyweds actually shared some of their gift money with Kaylee and Danny in the hours following this uh, armed robbery, and that was extremely helpful considering they lost cash, credit cards, not to mention their IDs. <laughs> Kaylee and Danny Jones may be smiling now, but they certainly weren't over the weekend, at least late Saturday night. Wrong place, wrong time. The daughter and mother, visiting from eastern Pennsylvania, went to a wedding at the Kennedy School earlier in the evening. They snapped this photo to remember the night, but the good times came to a screeching halt soon after. As Kaylee and Danny were walking back to their Airbnb, Kaylee spotted someone following them. My mom was just having a good time, and I noticed a person parallel on the sidewalk next to us, kind of more so behind us. This was around Northeast 33rd in Webster. Kaylee says the man crossed the street and came towards them. He had a beanie on and he pulled it down and had a ski mask. When I saw that, I noticed that something was going to happen. And then right away, I mean, about eight feet away from us, he pulled out the gun. Kaylee says the guy demanded her backpack, so she handed it over. But Danny did not give the man her purse as quickly my arm <laughs> and she paid for it. He just like grabbed me, threw me down to the ground and then that's when it really becomes real to you. Like I, it didn't feel real until that happened. The armed man took off. He emptied the purse and dumped it about 10 blocks away. A homeowner found it and returned it to Danny. The backpack is still missing, but that's the least of anyone's worries. I think if the gun wasn't involved, I would have fought a little bit and have been more resistant because it was him and then the two of us. Daughter and mother in town for a wedding, only to find themselves the victims of an armed robbery. And it could be the safest place and something like this could happen. So to me, it doesn't change my opinion because I still like Portland. I like this area. Yeah, no question about it. Kaylee still loves Portland and Oregon. In fact, she may be moving here for a new job. In the meantime, the suspect in this armed robbery is described as a white guy in his early 20s, long hair, 5'5", five, five, maybe a little bit taller. Anyone with information about the case should contact the Portland Police Bureau. Robbery detectives are investigating. Dan, back to you. Mike Benner live tonight. Thank you, Mike. I want to show you this damage here. An alleged street racer did this when he crashed into a house in northeast Portland just this afternoon, happening near 137th and Halsey. You can see the van right there shoved against the house and a white car that went through a fence and into the yard really badly damaged. Police say witnesses saw the driver of the vehicle racing before this happened. That person was arrested. No word yet on charges. There were no reports of any injuries, though, tonight, which is good news. Tonight, we're digging into the criminal past of a man accused in a deadly hit and run in southeast Portland. We're talking about Antonio Montgomery, and he was in court just this afternoon. He's accused of speeding through a red light Monday and doing this, crashing into a Jeep near 148th and Powell. Two sisters in that Jeep were killed, Charlene Hout and Robin McCready, both dead. Police say Montgomery ran from the scene. He was caught about a mile or so later. He was hiding in a backyard swimming pool. We got some video of his arrest. We talked to one of the victim's sons over the phone. I want the community to know that, uh, you know, criminals out taking out good people like my aunt and my mom is not okay. And uh, when somebody has a track record like his, uh, maybe, maybe the judges need to pay a little bit closer attention to what's going on after they sentence their criminals. You heard him mention track record. Well, we looked into Montgomery's track record. He was on probation for two separate crimes at the time of the crash, and his license was suspended. 
He pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor gun charge in 2018 and a felony count of fleeing a police officer earlier this year. He's now facing, of course, much more serious charges of manslaughter and hit and run, among others. New tonight, the Oregon State Senator accused of making threats against the Senate President and State and Senate Police, State Police rather, is now being threatened himself. The Polk County Sheriff's Office tells us it's investigating death threats directed at Senator Brian Boquist and his family. This all stems from Boquist saying that state police should, quote, send bachelors and come heavily armed if they tried to arrest him for walking out of the Capitol. He and fellow Republicans at the time were stopping a vote on cap and trade. Authorities are investigating a possible death related to last week's earthquakes in California. They found a man in Nevada dead, pinned under a truck. The man appeared to have been working on that truck when the quake happened. They believe the vehicle collapsed on top of him. President Trump today also declared an emergency in California to provide some federal resources for recovery. Now, in the days since those California quakes, a lot of people up in this area have been thinking kind of the obvious. What about a big quake here? What if it struck in our location? Now, we got a chance today to talk to one Portland woman who's been preparing for just that for decades. And we say, you know what, being prepared four years early is better than being prepared two seconds too late. Betsy Shand is the co-author of a book on how to survive natural disasters. Now, the first came out in 1995 after the spring break quake. She says step one, start an emergency kit. And you can build one, one item at a time. Do it slowly. Water is a big key. You need to have one gallon per person per day for two weeks. So that's about 56 gallons of water for a family of four. Add that to some storable food, medicine, tools, and sturdy shoes. Then, know your neighborhood's earthquake plan. Know where your designated staging area is. In the event of a disaster and you're not able to stay at your home, you need to go somewhere. Now, if you don't know where your neighborhood disaster staging area is, you can find out pretty easily. Just reach out to your neighborhood association and they should be able to let you know. A Portland restaurant closure has left some employees and customers a little stunned tonight. They say they're also out some money. Cupcake Jones had two locations, one in the Pearl District, another in Vancouver. We stopped by the Pearl District location, and you can see from the video kind of what we saw there. There's a for lease sign in the window. Employees we talked to say that their paychecks have been bouncing. We also spoke to several customers. They say they ordered cupcakes for events, some upcoming weddings, two brides. They told us that they, were, uh, they weren't really told that this closing was happening. They had paid deposits, too, and haven't been refunded. I mean, our biggest thing was, okay, I mean, 200 bucks is just gone, which is a bummer when you're planning a wedding and your wedding is expensive and to have 200 bucks just disappear sucks. I'm missing the last three pay periods of paychecks and then I also have a reimbursement that hasn't come back yet, so I'm still waiting on that. Now, we were trying to get some answers for these people and get some information out to them. We reached out to the owner of Cupcake Jones today, and though she did respond to us over text message, she wouldn't answer some of our questions, including questions about the company's closure and why it happened. We learned about this story from a viewer tip, so if you have a story idea, please send it in to us. You can submit it very easily on our website. You could email us at newstips at kgw.com or just find us on Facebook. It has been nearly two years since the Eagle Creek wildfire that devastated part of the gorge, and that included several wineries in that area who lost part of their harvest because of the fire. First evacuation happened, uh, level one. <laughs> Bob and I had to make the decision of whether to rebuild, which we did. All those emotions after two years. Now, the Phelps Creek Vineyard lost 75% of their harvest. Not from the flames, actually. It was the smoke that blanketed that area. But they found a way to salvage the vintage. Now, the winery is about to release a new smoky Pinot Noir. It's something different that reflects that season and, and, and brings back so many memories for not those of us that were close to the fires, but those of us that heard about the fires and were following the story. And the wine's going to help raise some money to restore trails burned by the fire. Mount Hood Winery and Stave and Stone Winery, they have grapes also that were impacted by that smoke, and they're going to be producing their own smoky batches. And each of these wineries will have a tasting this weekend of the special batch. If you're interested, go check it out. Coming up, a Washington State professor has been caring for this rare plant for 17 years. It's my baby. I, I feel like an expectant father, very much so. I worry about it all the time. Well, now he's expected baby. Uh, he's an expected father, and that baby is about to bloom. 
how you can see the corpse flower in Vancouver. And congratulations to Chendra, the Oregon Zoo elephant, expecting her first baby. But zookeepers are asking kind of a funny question, who's the daddy? But first, she's been swimming for over 15 hours straight. We're gonna check in with the Portland woman trying to become the first to swim all the way around Savi Island. Well, if she had a chance to look up, she might have seen some nice color in the sky. We got this rainbow from out in Washington County. I have a great sunset for you, too. Still a few showers out there, but they will be winding down. We'll also have the latest for you on what eventually is going to become Hurricane Barry in the Gulf of Mexico.